Authors Over 50, Writing in Life's Sweetest Third. Authors Over 50's weekly podcast celebrates writers and their journeys to publication. Writing after 50 is a whole story on its own, so let's skip to Life's Sweetest Third and talk with authors about their journey from pen to publish. Welcome, I'm Julia Daly, your host, and I invite you to listen to interviews with writers who've achieved their goal of publishing a book just later in life. We've seen award lists for under 30 or under 40, but I've yet to see lists for those who've achieved a significant milestone of their own, launching a new career and publishing their first book after the age of 50. We will hear about these authors' inspirations, struggles, strategies, and the smell of that first book. These writers' journeys inspire me because I'm one of them. My guest today is a former professor of nursing education and is presently the clinical educator of a large retirement community. She has a passion for working with the elderly and creating this book is her bucket list labor of love. Her goal is to help children realize that older adults can bring love into their lives along with valuable lessons. She and her husband have three grown children, four grandchildren, and two golden doodles. Welcome to Authors Over 50, Vicki Rogers. Thank you so very much for having me. Vicki, our opening question on Authors Over 50 is, what took you so long to write your first book? Well, I think I just let life get too busy when I was working. Um, I retired two years ago, December 2020, um, from teaching nursing. And I had the, the book premises, I had met a lady that worked at the nursing home where I do clinicals at with my nursing students. And she was at the time about 88, 89 years old. And she, long story, we bonded over gluten-free diets of all things. And she was a World War II cadet nurse. So she and I developed this just wonderful friendship. And I was able to escort her on the Greater St. Louis Honor Flight. She was the first cadet nurse to get to go. So it was exciting. Um, and so she didn't have any children and she loved kids and used to teach Sunday school, has no family in the area. So um, I looked around, and I thought, I wonder if there's any books on showing children what it'd be like to visit a nursing home before I took them to the nursing home. And I couldn't find anything that was what I was looking for. I took my child, grandchildren to the nursing home and they loved Miss Ru Ruby and them, developed this just one wonderful sunshiny relationship. And it was wonderful, it's just a, like the symbiotic relationship where it was so good for the kids and it was so good for her. And um, so I wrote the book. Once I retired December 2020, I hooked up with an author group and was able to two evenings a week during when COVID was in, we were kind of grounded anyway. And I was able to hook up with them. And we met two evenings a week. So I sat on Zoom two evenings a week and they walked through 12 weeks of self-publishing. And I ended up taking the class twice through because by the time I found the illustrator and, and everything, it just worked out and I took the class twice through, but it was um, very helpful, great resource, great resource. But that's kind of why it took me so long. I waited till I retired to get the book done when I had time to think. A lot of us do that. And I, I love the fact that you couldn't find what you were looking for. So you created it. And I think you have to have a real heart for the elderly uh, to want to to mix in children and the elderly, I think, is a great idea. Yeah, the intergenerational friendship, it just, it's so important to the elderly to get the children in there and dogs, too, actually. They love the dogs, too, but to get children in there and interact with them. But it is wonderful for children to be able to visit and develop that compassion and that understanding of what it's like when they're lonely and and for my grandkids even if we stop by for 10 minutes because we're on the way somewhere and we just stop in they know just from this experience that just by showing up for someone you made a huge difference and to me that's the best lesson in the world I can teach them I agree. My sister is a, an occupational therapist assistant in Atlanta, and she loves the elderly and loves working with them. So there's so much still to be learned from the wisdom of, of these people who just happen to be a little bit older. Absolutely. And there's so many of them sitting in 
long-term care and assisted living with no families and lots to share. So, you know, that's one thing I'm working with a local organization here in town to develop the Grand Families Program close by. So we're, we're working on that too. So this book has spearheaded a whole lot of things for me to do community service wise and with the grandkids and things. It, 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 you know, the book is a true story. It's the true story of my four grandchildren and Miss Ruby and the relationship they develop. And it is all the things that the kids have done with her. So they've done tea parties and birthday parties for her and taken her out to school musicals. And we've paraded in Halloween costumes and decorated her room for Christmas. And the kids hand stamped her a, um, a necklace for Christmas one year that says bonus grandma that she still wears. She's, she's 94 now and she still wears it. And, you know, just all those things that they, we stop by and bring cookies. She's gluten-free. So we stop by Baker and we stop by and, and bring her cookies and things like that. But the book is, it's a beautifully illustrated. I looked long and hard for an illustrator that had the, the vision that I did, which is why I self-published. I, I looked around and thought about sending the, 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 the book to um, publishers and things like that. Um, I don't know. I just wanted control of the illustrations because I knew what I wanted. So I found an illustrator that lives in Virginia. I'm in Illinois. She lives in Virginia. She was born in um, India. And but she's just delightful to work with. Her illustrations are absolutely just um, they're whimsical, but they're they're real life. And it's just fun. it was fun to create my grandchildren and Miss Ruby and myself in characters. And what was fun was allowing every time I'd get an illustration back, I would copy it in color and take it into Miss Ruby's room. And so then she we would hang it on her door. She and I would critique it, and then I was able to give the illustrator back feedback. And then we would hang it on her room of door. And she was so excited to be able to tell people about the book as we went through. So she knows that she was the poster child for other children to befriend older adults. So we've, we've talked about that a lot. And she's just very excited. We've, we've won multiple awards. And I just got notice of an award we got last just this past week. And she just gets so excited when she finds out that the book is getting recognition. It... Um, has spearheaded multiple service projects. So we've got grade schools that are doing service projects based on my book, which the book is a mission for me. And to find that I have a whole entire school of 480 children using the book and using the sunshine bag project from the back and creating these beautifully decorated sunshine bags, red tote bags that they deliver to nursing homes is just, it's its just inspirational for me to see that the book spearheaded that, that, they, that one school did 220 sunshine bags they were able to gift to seven local community nursing homes. So 220 elderly people knew that to, that 480 children were thinking of them, which is just for me, the mission. Mission accomplished, check. That has to be so rewarding. And I just love the idea of, of that mission. I, I hope you take it on the road and contact every nursing home and every school in the country. Yes. Yeah. It's, I, I would love to do that. That's probably the biggest challenge for me in the writing. And I'm sure that other authors would probably agree with me. And that is the marketing aspect of the book. And with mine, it's a little bit different because I'm marketing. Of course, I would like to sell books, but I'm, I'm marketing as a mission. So that that's the whole the challenge for me is, has been to, to market it and to get it out there. And people love the mission. They love the whole premise of the book and things like that but yeah it, it it would be nice to find I think a grant like an intergenerational grant or something like that that would allow me to take it nationally so that's my next step is to look for something like that I think that's a great idea well we know the inspiration for your book and I love that you involved her so closely in the project itself but how did you determine the plot well when I got to thinking about it you know, there was multiple things I could have done. I could have, you know, used a generic person. Um, but when I sat down and talked to Ruby about it, we decided that maybe we could do this together. And then I just, I just got to think about all the things that would maybe motivate another child to do things. So I just let each one of the grandkids, so it's kind of like a legacy for the grandkids too, to be honest with you. Um, I let each one of them tell me their favorite thing that they did with Miss Ruby. And then I used those 
in the book. So each kid child gets one page where they're talking about what they'd like to do with Ruby. And then the next page is what they did with her. So um, it, 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 and it worked, it worked. It just, it just worked. It, it flowed. Um, one of the things I really hadn't thought about, this was probably a, a huge amount of work. I'm sure you know, and working with the illustrator, when you write a book like this, where every day is a new day, everybody has to have new clothing on. <laughs> It's like, so then you have to design new clothing each day and figure out what they're going to be wearing. And it ended up being a lot harder than I thought, a lot more involved than I thought. But the illustrator was very kind. She had great ideas. In the beginning of the book, the first page, Miss Ruby is sitting on a, a sofa in her room and she's reading a book about World War II. So those are little details that we were able to put in, little Easter egg things. Um, and she's lonely and there's no, no, nothing on the walls. It's just plain wallpaper. And then in the very last illustration, she's sitting on the same couch, but there's four children sitting on the couch with her. And I'm kind of sitting off to the side with this proud look on my face. And then on the back wall is pictures, framed pictures of all of the illustrations, of all the activities that kids have done with her all through the book. So it's symbolic of the memories they make with her throughout the whole book, which is really sweet. You are really touching my heart today. That just is, is such a, a wonderful mission. And, and I, I'm just so happy that you thought of this and that you have reached out to so many and that you're touching so many lives. I had a, a lot of God moments writing the book. A lot of people that love the mission and helped just all the way down to the person who did the pictures for the, I was able to get each one of everybody's bio in the back and things. And she actually recreated the cover in a photo of all of us. So we've got a photo in the back of the real Ms. Ruby and the Gigi squad and Gigi. And um, I was able to get several projects in there for kids to do with an older adult. So, you know, I didn't just give them a book with a few ideas. I gave them some projects to do, which is one of them is the sunshine bag project. And it, my grandson asked, could we have a sunshine bag Facebook page where people would upload their pictures of, and we do, we have, it's called the sunshine bag project. And it's, um, a lot of the nursing homes, we've uploaded the pictures of the residents getting their bags from the schools and things like that. And it's, it's really sweet to see the, the residents get those bags and just, they're just filled with goodies. They're filled with puzzle books and magnifying glasses and colored pencils and color, adult coloring books and just a, lots of things. But there's a huge list in the back of the book of things that older adults would like in a bag. So it kind of worked out. Well, Vicki, I think from a children's book, you have found your next phase of your life and your mission. Yeah, it's, it's been nice. I would love to also write a book. Miss Ruby and I went on the honor flight and I would love to write a book of her explaining to the children what the honor flight was like. So we could like a paid from a patriotic perspective for kids. So that's one that's kind of in the back of my mind too, is to write. And then you could maybe have each one of the memorials that in a little bit of explanation, a little box down below, you could explain what the memorial is, but then through Ruby's eyes, what it was like to visit those things would be kind of sweet. But, yes. And, and, and talk about the nurses in World War II and, and what all they did, you know, sometimes we absolutely. only hear about the, the men who were involved. We don't hear about the women who were involved. Exactly. Well, and she was a cadet nurse, which is for any of your listeners that are not familiar with us cadet nurse, it was a five-year program that President Roosevelt signed in at the very end of World War II because so many of the nurses were helping with the war effort. The healthcare system in our country almost collapsed. So they put 125,000 17 to 35-year-old single young women through accelerated nursing programs, and they were running the hospitals. We had 17 and 18-year-olds charge nurses on huge floors in the hospitals in the country, but they credit them with salvaging the country's healthcare system. So... And it's, it's, it's just, it's a, it's a neat story that most people don't have never heard of. I had never heard of that. So you're educating all of us today. And I think that would be great to put into one of your stories. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, would, it would be a, a good story for kids to understand and know because when they signed up, those young women, they signed up on the dotted line. It, they didn't have a, an expiration date for their service. It was the duration of the war. So they had no idea how long they were going to be involved, but they got free education, room and board, 
and and edu- you know they were they 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 also they signed up one hundred twenty five thousand of them, which is pretty really wonderful. And that's teaching our children today about volunteering and and serving our country. Exactly, exactly. And it, I I would love to see more kids do like the Grand Families program where they adopt somebody that's lonely, even out in the community. There's a lot of lonely older people staying in the community and things like that. There's research too. When I was doing writing the book, the um, I, they, you know they want you to find influencers. Well. I don't know any influencer that's doing intergenerational friendship. So I looked for a, a, t- a TED Talk video to see if I could find someone. Very first TED Talk video I found on intergenerational friendship was a lady named Anjali Patel. And her, her talk was my book two years before I even wrote it. It was amazing. But she talked a little bit in, in her talk about children in depression. And how just having one older adult friend can make all the difference in the world to kids that are suffering from depression. And I just found that fascinating to um, to think from that perspective, too, that, you know, this older adult, you're not just helping them. They make a huge difference for the kids, too. It was kind of interesting. That's very exciting work. It's, it's, it's been a lot of fun. What about any challenges? You mentioned publicity that, that might have worked or didn't work for you. What post-publication have you been doing to promote the work? And tell us a little bit about the self-publishing process and that learning curve. Yeah, the self-publishing process was because I was a registered nurse for years. I mean, I was a nursing professor. This is totally 180 from anything I've ever done before. But I would highly recommend anybody that's interested in writing to seek out their resources because that, you know, hooking up with that author group that was a 12 week writing process through the self publishing was instrumental in me figuring it all out. I could, I would have been very, very difficult on my own, um, you know, cause they walked you through the writing process and then editing and then not being married to your words that you can't in a children's book, you have to make it short and sweet. So I had to, a lot of words I had to get rid of and condense and figure out how to make it a little bit more smooth. That was, that was a little bit of a challenge, too, is just figuring out how to word things and not be so wordy. Um, and then, you know, the illustration process, because it kind of goes in steps, and then you got to have your, you know, everything written, and then doing an illustration briefing where you each page and what your vision is, and then, you know, when the illustrator gives it back. And then I didn't realize that the illustration process was, you know, they do a draft, so you get it back in sketch form, and then you look at it. And then you get it back in a colorized format and then it is detailed. So a lot of the things that you think are left out, they're not left out. They just haven't been added yet. I had um, found some people to beta read the book before it was totally finished. And it was in the sketch, it was in the the colorization stage, but the details had not been added. It was funny what people noticed. Um, There's a car scene where we're all in the car and the kids are all excited and they're planning what they're going to do next. And they didn't have seatbelts on yet. So somebody noticed there weren't seatbelts on them yet. So um, the birthday party, there were one, there was only four plates and there needed to be five, you know, things I just didn't, I didn't catch or think about, but somebody else did, which was kind of neat. Um, but the, the, it was so exciting to get it back when it was in the color stage and to see what it looks like and um, go back and forth. You know, um, if somebody was too heavy, she could make them thinner and things like that. And um, Will, my youngest grandson, that was, there were two things that Miss Ruby asked for when we were doing it. One of them was that we make her cute, which we did, and that we make sure Will has his dimples. So um, Will's dimples are shining in all the illustrations that he's in. But it's a little bit pricey. I didn't quite understand how expensive it was going to be to hire an illustrator because I paid for 28 pieces of artwork. You know, each picture is different. Each, every child's doing something different. Their hands are different. Um, one, once one illustration, they're laying in the grass. You know, some of the illustrations, they're in active things they're doing. Um, one of the illustrations, Avery's on stage and we're sitting at her musical. Um, so yeah, it was um, a lot of details, lots of details. You know, even just designing the nursing home was fun and being able to, my grandsons play hockey. So we were able to get their, their teams are the lightning. So we were able to get their lightning bolts on some of their shirts, which was cute. 
I love the personalization of, of all the artwork you're talking about. Did you consider going outside the country to get a larger uh, number of books printed, maybe bring down the cost? I did, but I'm really, um, I really want to stay American. I, I really want to be, wanted the book to be printed in the USA. So I went with a, a company that is in St. Louis, but they print um, in, in other states. Um, and it was very pricey, you know, doing the offset printing. That was another big learning curve for me was print on demand versus offset printing. And, um, you know, my book is on Amazon. It's on Ingram Spark. It's available on Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble. I, it's interesting when you Google yourself in the book, how many bookstores have it because it doesn't really cost them anything to sell it online yeah. on their website. So yeah. even Walmart. So it's on a Walmart. It's kind of fun to be able to say that. Yeah. But um, the print on demand um, is a little pricier if you want to buy your own books. So I did have 500 books printed to begin with, and I'm down to about 40. So I'll have to make a decision on whether to print more or just use the print on demand services from Amazon and KDP. But the print, the offset printing is much prettier. It really is a much nicer, nicer book. Well, that's what I understand. You know, the colors are much more vivid and you get a higher quality uh, of the children's books. And, you know, a lot of people think that writing a children's book is, is not as extensive as, as writing a novel, but you have such small um, amount of real estate there. You know, you have to be so precise with what you put on every page. And like you said, with all those illustrations, you really um, have a lot to do with writing and, and illustrating a children's book. And with a picture book, the pictures have to tell at least 50% of the story. So you've got to make sure that it's they're both congruent together, that they match, and that the, the story you're telling is told in the pictures also. And yeah, it was, it was fun. Well, tell us a little bit more about the, the book that you've brought to share today and then, and then read a few paragraphs for us or whatever you'd like to share. This is what it looks like. And as you can see, it is Miss Ruby and the Gigi Squad. Friendship comes in all ages. So Miss Ruby and then I'm Gigi. My grandchildren call me Gigi and they're my squad. So I like to tell people that. Um, she's on the illustration. She's holding a sunshine bag in her hand. And we're sitting, we're sitting outside in a garden area. And the book has won multiple awards. It was an Eric Hoffer um, Grand Prize finalist. And I just got word that the Best Indie Book Award winner in children's all category. So it was a, a number one winner in there. So that's the other thing you don't think about is how many, if you want to get recognition, you need to be applying for some awards. And so I think I've applied for six or seven awards and there's three or four of them still won't even be till the end of the year or next year but it is exciting when you know that judges read the book and they they felt your mission so that that's been very exciting the other thing i didn't think about was these are in pages you have to design your own in pages that you're what you what you want people to know you by so in the, the very beginning of the book i wrote a letter to the children so i mean that's what i'd like to read to you and it just says Dear reader, we are so happy that you have chosen to read about our adventures with Miss Ruby. It's our hope that you will also find an older adult to create special memories with. We know that you will forever cherish the love and wisdom they share with you, and they will treasure the sunshine and happiness you bring to their days just by being you. Happy reading, XOXO, the Gigi Squad. And then I would like to show you um, one of the illustrations. This is the illustration that the illustrator did of Miss Ruby and her bonus grandma necklace that was hand stamped metal. And she made it look just so gorgeous, just like the metal. And then there's a couple of the illustrations there. You know, this, this one is when we went shopping to buy her Christmas stuff to, to decorate her room. She'd not had a Christmas tree in 40 years, she told me. Um, Those are beautiful illustrations, so colorful this, and This so is the lovely. sunshine bag. Your book it's is just really, full of gorgeous artwork. Yeah, it's, it, it truly was 28 pieces of artwork. You know, the, the birthday party. You mentioned uh, having another book in you. Have you begun that book yet? I've started looking at it. I've talked to the illustrator about it. Um, 
Obviously, it will be a lot more pricey for illustrations because of having to draw the monuments and things, which is a lot more detail and things like that. So, you know, you the other thing you don't think about is these are full full page illustrations. You can also do spot illustrations, which are just like in circles and then the words fit around it. You can do one illustration on a page and the words on the other page. So there are ways to be a little bit more economical. I just had a lot of pictures I wanted in here. So, yeah. but uh, there's a lot of ways you can do the book. And I've thought about using spot illustrations a little bit more in the next book if I when and if I should get to do it. So yeah, this one's kept me quite busy. Well, you know, I think we all learn on that first book and then we can we can be a little more economical on the on the next ones to come. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. It, yeah. Yep. That's that's exactly where I'm at. I was just trying to figure out what I want to say. And then you have to also think about how do you want it to be worded? You know, I I want it to be Ruby telling the kids, but would it also be fun for the children to be telling other kids what Miss Ruby told them? So, you know, there's just some, some several ways to look at it. I just got to figure out what's the easiest way to write it. So, Nikki, what does writing success look like to you? Well, in the beginning, you know, I was thinking it would be the number of books that I sold. Um, now, to me, it's the number of lives that we touched. It's number. It's the number of lives that the book has touched. I, in the beginning, wrote the book thinking I would encourage one child to find one friend. And I, then, it, then it took off. And I had my first teacher approach me about doing a service project with the whole school. And then I found that a whole school could touch 220 older adults. And so I've, I've, right now, the third school in, in our area is doing the service project. I just went and spoke to third, fourth, and fifth graders and did, you know, read the book on an overhead. And they were just mouse quiet. It was the sweetest thing. And they had lots of good questions to ask because they're in the middle of their young authors writing now. So I was able to talk to them a little bit about the writing process and all of that. But yeah, in the beginning, it was about one child finding one adult. And now it's more about, that's still my, that's still my purpose. But now it's taken a step further and it's become service projects. So I've wrote a service project lesson plan that I would like to take on a national level and possibly look for those grants that I was talking about to do that. So it all just takes time. That's all we have now, Vicki, is time. So we can have That's lots right. of missions and ministries and, and get out there. And I call it life's sweetest third. So that's what it's all about. Isn't that the truth? Yep, that's true. That's true. How has this project and this book affected your own grandchildren who were involved so closely in it? They have been um, very proud, very proud. Um, they're sweet as in their, um, every time we get an award, they're so sweet with the, so ha being happy for me. Um, they, when the book first came out, they were just speechless with the illustrations and how pretty it was. And I was able to put, a hardback, a paperback, and then a lot of the newspaper articles from the area and different things like that and a nice box for them for Christmas one last year. And, you know, my youngest grandson, Will with the Dimples, his school is the one that did the first service project. So he was famous. <laughs> he was quite famous in the school. But um, yeah, it's been, it's been good for them. It's been good for them to know that they're helping other children think about, just think about. It. And it, one of the things I talk to kids about when I talk to them is, is talk to your own grandparents. Don't sit at holidays on your cell phone. Ask them questions. Find out what they did when they were a child. Ask all kinds of questions. So I just hope that I reached a couple of kids and when they go to Thanksgiving and Christmas, when they went to Thanksgiving or think Christmas this year, that maybe they'll think a little bit more about asking questions and talking to their grandparents because that information dies and then nobody ever asked. Well, I think this is quite a legacy for you to to have this book and this project and be so involved with your grandchildren and they'll remember these memories forever and they'll be so proud of you as as their grandmother. I know when my own grandchildren read my novels, even though I thought they were a little far advanced for them at the time, they were so proud to to tell their teachers that my grandmother has written a book. 
Yes. Yes. Even my high school grandchild, we gave um, her draw her theater teacher and her choir teacher and her English teacher all books. And they were just thrilled to get, you know, children's books and just see Avery in the book, which is kind of neat. And just to know her personality involved doing something for an older adult is, is, is really cool too. Yeah. So. Well, Vicki, as always, our last interview question is our writers over 50 are quite unique. Do you have advice for writers 50 and above? I would suggest that my, my biggest helpful thing that I did was I looked for resources. I utilized other people's knowledge. I, I, it's one thing to read it all online, but it's another thing to reach out to author groups. There's a lot of Facebook groups um, with a lot of a wealth of knowledge. There's lots of people right now that are leading classes in self-publishing. Be cautious in the prices. Some of them are really way too expensive. So find one that fits your needs, but utilize your resources. There's some great resources out there. Illustrators are all over Instagram. You can find just about any kind of illustrator that you want just by looking. You know, you can um, ask them for a sample, tell them what you want. And for a very minimal fee, they will give you a sample so you know what you're getting. And if it's what you really want, um, just utilize your resources. That's, that's the best advice I can give. Reach out, ask questions. Find an author that wrote a book similar to what you want to do and reach out to them. The authors are very sharing. I agree. We have a very generous community. And unlike others I've been involved in in the corporate world. So I just appreciate you so much. And I'm so excited for your mission. I would like to see it here in my own little town in Texas. So maybe it's going to spread throughout the country. That's wonderful. Well, if you have a need for the service project, lesson plan just let me know i will send it to you well i certainly will and thank you so much for being with us and we're happy to say that you're now one of our authors over 50. thank you so very much thank you for joining us today please look for authors over 50 every thursday when we will have conversations with accomplished debut novelists over the age of 50. please subscribe and share with a friend and check out my own publication journey after 50 at www.juliadaily, that's D-A-I-L-Y, like dailynewspaper.com. Until next time, keep reading and writing. And remember, it's never too late to fulfill a dream in life's sweetest third. <music>